Hi guys, welcome back to Ellison Elite with a special video. Now I know everyone's like, oh Spyro's ended, blah de blah. I know, don't worry, we are gonna have the collectibles. We are gonna have the collectibles special at some point soon. But I thought we'd do a mini series. And basically it's gonna involve Spyro 1, Spyro 2, and it will only include Spyro 3 when we've done the collectible video, obviously, because of what it's going to be. So this series basically, or should I say episode one of the series, is called My Best Spyro 1 Worlds. Now, as you know, we have gone to quite a few worlds. As you can see, we have been to, <coughs> sorry, quite a few. So, number one, I can't stress it enough. Number one, ooh, has got to be the Artisan Homeland. I mean, come on. Isn't it just fantastic? The original, I mean, I remember the original, as everybody else would if you've played or seen any PS1 footage. And it just stays so true to the series, and it was just absolutely fantastic. As soon as you turn, turn it on and you start here, you just think, this is pure nostalgia. And, oh, I just love it. I think this is one of the best worlds ever. Look at him, he's shitting himself. I just think, oh... I just, I'm in love with this world. This is, this is the, if you haven't noticed, in the videos that we've seen in Spyro 1, 2 and 3, when it's near the end or whatever, they've always come back here. Or to, um, if it hadn't been here, it's been Stonehill, one of the two. And it's so good, so good. So that's why this one is one of my favourites. And I can't stress enough, actually, on to the next one, this world, Dark Hollow. This has been one of my favourites since the beginning as well. It's just absolutely fantastic. And it's not, I know it's not a home world. It's from the first home world, obviously. But, I don't know about you guys, but it's just the ambience. Like the nice, the night time, the music, when it gets going. And it's just, it's just so, I don't know. It just feels so magical. So magical. Let's have a little bit of a look around. You go here, you. Oh, the music is so fantastic. I love it. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Didn't expect that, did we? Go away. So, yeah. Get rid of them. But, yeah. Oh, I just love it. And, like, this is like a mini library with, like, a swimming pool. Can't swim, obviously, in Spyro 1. But it's just so good. I love it. I love this so much. The music, the ambience, it's just so... I'd say, as far as relaxing, I just, I don't know, it's just so chill, so, so chill. I think it is anyway. And now you can, you light the fires up and it's just, oh, I love it, I love it. Honestly, one of my favourites ever. I love it, absolutely love it. So that's Dark Hollow, one of my other favourite Spyro levels of all time, to be perfectly honest. The next one, which I absolutely love, is, I think it's called, yeah, Ice Cavern. I love this as well. The music as well. The music does it for me. And it's good with this one, because you can see, oh, that music. Just listen to that music. Oh, and you've got the northern lights twinkling around as well. It's just so good. And look, you, this with this mission slash level, whatever you want to call it, you can see the ending. Like, so you know where you've got to go, and you can see that the ending is totally in sight. It's absolutely, oh, I just love it, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But there's more to it than just this bit, as you all know. Now, if you haven't played this, why haven't you played it? You really should. It's got, I mean, to be fair, Spyro, it's just a nice, chill game to play. Like, if you don't want anything major, you know, killing and all that jazz, blood and all that kind of crap. You know, you can just chill with this. And I'm not saying that it's not stressful, because believe me, there is some stressful parts of Spyro. Trust me. Trust me. Especially the speedways. And there you look, you've got the ice cave and inside. It's just, oh, I love it. I just love it. It's fantastic. It's amazing. 
the architecture of the whole making of this as well is just fantastic. It's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And when you get to the home screen, this is something else as well. When you get to the home screen part here to return home, it's not the end. It's not the end. You think it's the end, but it's not. You've got through here, where if you haven't noticed, there is some free lives up there that you can get, and there's some secret gems tied to the lampposts. But not all that. If you go up here, haha. Another area, which when I first ever played this, I totally forgot and didn't even notice this area. Not noticed it at all. I didn't even notice it. I was like, what? Where's the dragon then? Where's the dragon? But, yeah, it's just, oh, I love it. And if you love adventure games like Crash, this one, the original Tomb Raider and that, you'll love this too. It's just... You just can't go wrong at all with Spyro, really. It's just amazing. And that's why this one had to be on the list as well. It's just absolutely fantastic. Now this one is one of my favourites as well. Because if you listen to the music, just listen for one second. Recognise it? It is the end theme tune. It is the end theme tune to both Spyro 1, 2, including 3 as well. It's the theme tune that marks the end of the game. And it's just, I think it's brilliant to have it in. I just think it's fantastic. And like I said, oh shit, I've been eaten. <laughs> Oops. Um, like I said, anyway, it's just fantastic. To be in a level with the end theme tune music is fantastic. It's just absolutely fantastic. You can go down there and you'll end up in a different area of the map, or you can go up there to end where the finish area of the map is. And it's just, it's just great. You know, two different areas that you've got to go to and hopefully try and not get killed as well at the same time, especially when you're a beginner of the game. It's so, uh, it is a bit stressful, but the music just makes it so relaxed and worthwhile to put the amount of time and love into this level and i just find it absolutely amazing i love it i absolutely do love it and i hope you guys do too now this one if you remember this this um music i'm sure played a part in aspira 3 um, level that we did earlier on um but this is lofty castle and this is in the dreamweave as well which I think is a bit before the Beast Makers. No, it's not. It's one of the last main hub worlds and everything. Right, so this is just fantastic. I love this. The music's fantastic. Again, this has got, like, multiple areas that you've got to go. Different things to do. You've got to look for a key for a chest, which can take for absolute ever to do. But it's just so good. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what draws me to these certain worlds. But I just, it's not the enemy, Zoro. It's more than music more than anything it's just so good and these fairies will help you once you've got them from the boxes obviously but it's not even the structure of the level that attaches me to this one it i'd say it's the fairy tale-esque style i would say that um draws me to this it's a bit fairy tale-ish you know and with this one you've got either an underground part of it that you can go into to release some fairies. I mean, you can even see the ending to this one, look. If you just look up there, you can see the ending, but you can see that there's a lot to do before you get there. And, yeah, so you've got down... You've got, you know, you've got all down here to do. Then you've got to do, like, a special glide thing. If you remember us doing that in Spyro 1, I've got a playlist for it anyway. But, oh, my God, it was fun but hard. And then you've got your supercharge where you've got to try and, you know, get over there and do special things. And, oh, it's so good. It is so, so good. I would recommend this level to at least see it more than once. You've got to see it more than once. It's just magnificent. And 
I just love it. It's so fairy tale esque. I mean, you'd accept, you, you know, you'd accept to, uh, accept. You'd expect, sorry, to have like fucking the princess in there or whatever, or in this one and stuff, but it's just, oh, it's so good. It is so good. Relaxing. And just, I don't know, it's just so therapeutic, I'd say. Fe very therapeutic. It's so good. It's got a mixture of, you know, relaxation, but with a little bit of desperate thinking to make sure you get everything in the right order or the right place to find the right things. Oh, it's just, it's so good. Definite recommend. And again, this is, it's another hub world, I know, but I can't help it. Magic Crafters hub world. Oh, I just love it again. And look, you can see where you can go to the end there for the blueness. I mean, you land here and you start here. You hear the horrible noise of that little critter thief thing. Oh, and you got to chase to... Oh. It starts off stressful as soon as you get there. If they wind you up like they do me, you will all know what I'm talking about. Oh, excuse you, Spyro. I'm trying to big you up here, lad. Don't do that. I can think Spyro's got flu. Um, yeah, you can see the end in there and you can see, you know, different things. It's just so, so good. Oh, I love it. Anyways, let's have a quick look around. The music is fantastic. You, you little swat. Yeah, him. And these, they always remind me of, like, what do you call them? Um, oh, what do you call them? Them people at the end of a rainbow, what do you call them? Oh, come on, guys, what do you call them? Oh, can't remember what you call them, but you know what I mean. Little shithead. I'll tell you what, he does wind me... Oh, I'm not doing I'm not doing this again like we did in the first one. Yeah. What the... Leprechauns, I think. That's what you call them. But yeah, so it's so good. It is so good. And this is like a little separate area for itself, really. Because you can't see the end, but you know the end is just through a certain door. And it's... Oh. It's amazing. And then down there, you've got your flight area. Oh, I hated the flights. You know, what was I like, guys? You know what I was like. Then you go up here and you've got your other level. You know, your Wizard's Peak. Wizard Peak? Yeah, Wizard Peak. you got your Blowhard. Which we did make a joke about, but I won't go into that. And then you've got your ending of your level. So there you go. And look, up there, where we started. Hello, dude. No, I'm alright, thank you, bro. But, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Love this. This is another one that you can just I don't know, it's just got a lot of potential. You know, as soon as you go through that entrance, there's a lot to do before you get to this area, if you're doing it like we did. And it's just so good to know that when you get to here, you've definitely achieved, because there's horrible enemies in this world as well that do fight back. Not like the first world where they hardly fight back. This one, they totally, totally 100% fight back in this one. And that's another reason why I think this is good though, because it shows that as you're moving forward into the game, so are they. And the difficulty is not just rising the portals and in Spyro's life, but also the enemies have to feel like they've got to fight back to win. And it's just, it's just one of those where you think, yeah, this is good. This is what we've come for. We're going to win. Again, I'm sorry, guys. It's another home world. I can't help it. This is just, I mean, I've already been to Lofty Castle here, but which was one of my favourite portals here. Um, this is one of my favourite homeworlds as well. I mean, you can see, look, you can get up there. There's loads of places that you can get to. You wouldn't even think it, would you? You'd think, oh, it's just one of these, but there's loads. There is absolutely loads to do. You go there, you can go up there, and you go around. You end up, you end up above on one of them. And it's like, what? Because there's, there's a portal on top of one of them. I'll see. Tell you what I'll do. I'll see if I can find it. So yeah, you've got Haunted Towers. And if it ain't up here, it'll be up the next one. Oh no, this just takes you back. This just takes you back. So it is, it's over there in that in that area. Ah, I can see it now, bloody hell. But anyway, that one, that, good to have a look around though, because like I said, I don't mind looking around. I absolutely love it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. And I really do think it's fantastic. I love this one so much. 
And there's your bloom guy. And as I said here, look, you've got your lofty castle, which we've been to. But above here, above here, you've got your speedway up there. And you've got to get there by going up to a different route, up where you come out of there. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. It's so good, but you can't get there without sorting them out. So you've got to sort them out. And then you eventually get up there. Go around here as you do. You've got to sort these out, otherwise you won't get there. Then voila, there's your flight. Absolutely fantastic. I love this one. This is another good one, guys. If I were you, explore this one a little bit because it's good. And also, sometimes you see some portraits around from the past Spyro games. And last but not least, guys, Stonehill. Because this is another area where Spyro and that lot do their interviews on the cutscenes. And this has got, I mean, the stuff down there, when you're originally doing the level, I mean. Uh, things in here to get loads of gems. And a dragon, obviously, as you know. This would be the ending. So this is your return home. Not before you go onto the beach. Oh, look at, Sp look at Spyro's footprint, bless him. And this, guys, is where you find the secret key that you'll need for the treasure chest. I'm not telling you where the treasure chest is, though, but that's where the key is. This one did my head in when I first ever played this game because I couldn't find all the gems. And you know why I couldn't find all the gems? I will show you exactly why. Oh, did you hear him? Did you hear him? He's back. Right, so get all that done. Go up here. You get your dragon and you fly over, right? And there's gems to do around that castle area. But why I couldn't find all the gems was because they were hidden in all this grass. And most of them was green gems, guys. If you remember, if you haven't seen it already, there is a playlist of our... There he is, look. He's got a dragon egg that you need. Um, if you haven't seen our full Spyro playthrough, um, Spyro one is in a playlist on on the YouTube channel. So go and have a look at that if you haven't already, because that was very good. It took us, I think, was it eight episodes to finish it all off? But it was very, very good. It was so good. I loved it. Loved Spyro 2 as well, but this, this holds a special place in my heart, does this Spyro. And there you have it, guys. That is some of my best, well, most best, of my Spyro One worlds. I mean, I love every single one of them. I love the Addison's home world, obviously. I love every town square, what a brilliant one. But I had to choose some of them. So I've chosen the most ones that speak from the heart of me, that make me feel so alive when I'm doing them, make me feel so nostalgic, it's unreal. And it's just a good game. Guys, if you haven't played it already, I would definitely play this game. Because it's not just one game you're getting, guys. It's three. Spyro 1, Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, or Gateway to Glimmer, wherever you're from in the world. And Spyro 3, Year of the Dragon. If I were you guys, pick it up. If you haven't picked it up already, if you've watched my stream, still pick it up because it'll, it's different doing it yourself. It's so... Oh, I can't... It's, so no, it's a nostalgic feeling if you know where I'm coming from with it. So, so good, guys. Anyway, that has been my... Best Spyro 1 World video, there will be a Spyro 2 one, and eventually a Spyro 3 one. Hope you've enjoyed yourselves, guys. I've been Ellis Emily. As always, guys, you have been awesome. I will see you in the next video, guys. And as always, look after yourselves and kiss your mum from me. I'll see you later, guys.